Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new PSGL highlights here. Round 10 of the championship in Imola, Italy. And that this is a crucial round for the championship. Building up only a handful of races to go in this season. Three races after this one today. So it is crunch time. We are with in touching distance of the championship lead but it is also critical that we outscore our championship rivals of Barry Borman and Jano Otmir today to keep our championship hopes alive. With that being said, the first step to achieving that is qualifying past Q2 and getting into Q3 as a baseline. We're here on my first new tyre run in Q2 going through the chicane it's going to be absolutely pivotal that we hook it up and can give ourselves a good opportunity to be through to q3 and not put too much emphasis on the final run being needed out of the final corner opening drs runs our line and that is provisionally p3 going across the line but as it drifted on later in the session that p3 became p6 and became also half a temp up on our delta running through the chicane critical to pick up the traction we lose a little bit of time relative to our past lap but marcel keeper goes for a stonking lap actually and goes top of the time sheet shortly beaten by otis lawrence we're coming through the final corner hard back on the power half a temp up with the delta where is this going to put us are we going to go into q3 yes we are with a 13.0 that is exactly what we needed, and now we are here in Q3. We're going to send it. We have to send it. I always want to be transparent. I always want to be honest. In qualifying preparation, building up this race, we were lacking pace. In specifically, Turn 1 and the final chicane, uh, well, the chicane in the final sector, I should say, we were losing temps on that chicane in the final sector per lap. We just couldn't get it hooked up with the curb, so we knew if we want to charge a pole position, we're going to have to PB. We have to PB once again, and we're going to have to put it all on the line, have a chance of pole position, and be fighting at the top in Q3. That being said, end of the first sector, coming through, we go purple in sector one. It's critical. It's a point four in the first set. We're picking up traction out of the hairpin. It's been a good lap so far. Coming up into the left-hander. Throw the car in, use up all the track on the inside and outside into Aquaminerati. This lap has been fully committed so far, leaving nothing on the table. Right up the curve, right up the white line, coming up to the chicane. And we're going to send it in, laid on the brakes. And we cut the corner just a little bit too much. It's even painful to look back, watching back now. Um, yeah, we were sending it. We tried everything. Uh, like I say, we were lacking qualifying pace coming into this round. Sometimes even being two temps a lap slower than our teammates. Um, so it was so critical and so pivotal that we put everything on the line and tried to drag something out of it. But we just didn't quite get the, the chicane hooked up on that lap. But with that being said, we've got to go for it again. The last lap up until the chicane was pretty much ideal for us. Um, it'll be pretty difficult to find lap time relative to that, that delta that we'll have. But that doesn't stop us trying. We're going to absolutely give it everything. Absolutely everything. We're, naturally as a driver, naturally as a competitive person as well, we have to give everything and we will give everything. We're going to lay it all on the line as we're coming down into the first chicane. Lay it on the brakes. You can see we get the first curve, get the second curve, and we do not get the same quite good exit as we did before, but still we're on for a good first set to split relatively through the left, through the right, picking up the curves, and we're almost attempt, we are attempt down now. This is not ideal, into the hairpin, and now we just gotta go hell for leather. We're one attempt down on the delta. We just, all, all cards on the table now through the left hander, hard back to the power, gaining some more time through there, that was fully committed into Aquamidorati, we're going to send it through here, and we just open up the track a little bit too much, and invalidate our lap time here in Q3, so, and yeah, we're just pushing too much in this game, because the lap's invalid, so we didn't really care too much anymore, but that's going to be P10, 
considering where we was pace wise at the start of the day p10 is not a bad result relatively disappointed of course because we always want to be on pole position but now we have the race to rectify that five lights lights out and away we go here we actually got held for quite a long time and we're on the hard compound tires the, all the cars ahead of us on the mediums and most cars behind us on the hard compound tires apart from wilson hughes on the soft compound tires going down to turn one just minding my own space looking up at my front wing trying to get a good exit you can see marcel keeper gets a little bit of wheel spin coming out of turn two everyone's deploying their battery around us whereas we're just choosing to save ours so you can see we're being very conservative right now as I knew, there was not really much point to attack these medium drivers ahead of us. And you can see Wilson going down the inside of Tom Manley. And that's just a little bit of racecraft there, leaving the inside open for Wilson. I knew he was not able to get past me on that corner. It was too far back. But opening up the corner, leaving a bit more room on the inside, just lowers the chance of him clicking me into a spin. Uh, so that's a nice little tip for you, league racing at home as well. And these situations on lap one where it does not matter too much, uh, if you leave the car's whip, if it doesn't cost you too much race time, definitely do it, because it can help you not be spun around by the car behind. Wilson was all under control though, so I doubt it would have happened, but it's always better to lower your chance of it happening anyway. Coming towards the end of Sector uh, sector 3, I should be saying, lap 1, and we are still in P10, and Wilson Hughes is on the soft compound tyres, so we're not going to fight him, we're not going to use our battery down the pit straight, we opt just to let him pass us on the pit straight, so we can live to fight another day. If anything, I would have actually liked him to start attacking the cars ahead and try to make up some track position, as that maybe would have given us an opportunity to move forward. But with that being said, Wilson was not able to make any inroads to Marcel Kiefer, so we're all over the back of Wilson. But we have been saving our tyres, saving our battery, and preparing for the long game, the long plan, and what we can do later in the race. Wilson, you can see, is dropping a bit back from Marcel, and we're able to follow, follow Wilson quite comfortably, to be honest, uh, relatively easily, especially as his soft compound tyres are starting to degrade, and I really felt good on these hard compound tyres, I felt confident, and was able to extract lap time out of them when we needed to, coming into the chicane through the left-hander, you can see about three, four tenths behind him on the exit, and now closing it yeah. a bit behind him, lap 11 of this race and he started to really struggle versus Martel Kiefer. He's done a fantastic job getting these soft compound tyres this far into the race though, it has to be said. But now it's time for us to capitalise on our fresher tyres at this point in the stint and try to capitalise on his tyres wearing out. So he's starting to fall away from the DRS zone of Marcel Kiefer. So now it's crunch time if we're going to make inroads in this race. We have to clear Wilson Hughes. But that being said, Wilson Hughes reads our mind and we're able to get past him as he dives into the pit lane. And now we're closing down to the DRS zone on Marcel Kiefer coming towards the end of the second sector split. You can see before the lap, it was 1.4 seconds and now it's down to one second, nine tenths as well on the exit. So we are going to be picking up the DRS zone and this is going to be super critical for our race as well to not leave us vulnerable to the cars behind speaking of the cars behind though Alfie Butcher will be a really critical part of the race you're going to see us working in unison quite a lot later on in the stint we knew that we didn't want to battle we had to use each other in the DRS zone to help each other along and close into the other cars you see Daniel Brisney and Jarno Otmir up ahead and we're going to let Alfie Butcher go past on this straight as we were talking about with the DRS. So now he can pull us along a little bit. We can save our battery. You can see now, lap 15, we have caught the back of Bresne. And Bresne has just dived straight to the pit lane and left Alfie in front of us. With Yano Watmir leading the race at the moment on his medium compound tyres. We'll go into the hard compound tyres later. With that being said, Yano has now made his pit stop and we are DRS leaping past Alfie Butcher into what is a temporary race lead later on in lap 18 we have decided that this will be our in lap this will be our box lap and now we're going to be putting on a juicy fresh sticky warm set of the medium compound tires and i was so excited to get these tires on in the race i like the hards the hards were going very well and we had really good pace in them but this game more than ever when you put a new set of tires on you could feel the grip you go two seconds a lap faster. Hey, can i have a general race more. update 
and you can hear me just asking for general race updates. If there's like the any cards of damage or not, if you know. Have not, already no. gone past us. The leaders are already in the first chicane, and Leonardo Otmir, who were chasing down early in the race, has already gone past us as well. Same as Daniel Berezne and Philippe Polishnader. Lap 20, you can see we've got a lot of battery and we opt to let Alfie Butcher go past us on this straight. We could have used battery to defend, but we decided it was better to save the battery for a later point in the race. Speaking about later point in the race, we're on the back of Alfie, on the back of Philippe, and we're going to go through a two for one down the pit straight. And now this is where our race is going to come alive. Lap 21, 2.1 seconds to Daniel Bresney at the start of this lap, and it is race critical. Opening up DRS across the line, and we don't go purple, 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 but we do go purple, purple, green for a 14.9, fastest lap of the race so far, and now we're in the DRS zone of Daniel Bresney, and now we are basically in the train for the lead of the race. Although we've got a lot of cars to pass, we are effectively in the same DRS train as the race leaders. With that being said though, it's now time to get past Daniel Bresne all over the back of him. We cannot wait the lap. We cannot wait for the DRS zone. We have to utilize our fresh tires, our fresh traction, our fresh grip, our battery. And doing that, we're going to go past Daniel Bresne on the straight up over the hill. And we get the move done. And now we have a bit of clean air heading into Acre Minerali. 1.2 seconds to Yano up there up ahead who's chasing down Wilson Hughes who's on very worn set of hard compound tyres now we close two temps in Aqua Minerali alone and now going through the chicane we have to nail it we have to make sure we get the DRS zone at the end of this lap and you can see we do nail it indeed and now we have taken four temps out of Wilson Hughes in that one chicane alone in the DRS zone now we haven't got that much battery relatively uh, we had to use quite a lot of battery to sort of catch up and get past Daniel Bresne, but we do have a massive tyre advantage. And now you can see Wilson Hughes has started to attack uh, Buki up ahead in the Aston Martin. Buki got a bit unfortunate with his timing, so he did not have the DRS down the pit straight. And now side by side, going around the outside, Wilson Hughes has to back out of it. We get a phenomenal run out of turn one. We duck the inside. Now on the inside of Wilson Hughes going into left-hander with a fresher medium compound tyres. He tried to hang around the outside but wisely backs out of it. So that's one move done this lap so far on the back of the Aston Martin. We pick up phenomenal traction, sliding around a little bit actually in the dirty air, but now we deploy a bit of battery and now we are up and past the Aston Martin. Our championship rival, Jano Otmir, is up ahead of us. He's only something like five points ahead of us in the driver's championship going into this race. So it's critical that we get past him Barry Berman, who is leading the Drivers' Championship, is behind us, in fact. He got taken out, quite unfortunately, on lap one. So this is a great opportunity for us, to be honest, to try and close in on our championship rivals and put ourselves back in this championship fight. Yaro Otmir, Thomas, Ronha side by side through the final corner. We get phenomenal traction. And of course, well, Thomas is our teammate, so we don't really have to deploy much battery to get past him on this straight. And uh, yeah, Vancouver was good teamwork in this situation. And we were able to clear three cars in one lap alone. And that is pivotal to our race here today. And now we chilled behind Yano for a lap. We saved a bit more battery. We saved a little bit of tyres relatively. So we're going to need them. Now we're going on the attack. Looking to make Yano go defensive. Trying to go around his outside on the hairpin. Nothing quite doing just there yet. Yano blows a bit of battery. Of course, he's also trying to attack Josh up ahead. And as I said before, I cannot emphasise enough. This is a championship battle between myself and Yano. It's pivotal that we try and score more points than each other in this race. And now we're in the slipstream. Yano's going to look down the inside of Josh. We read the situation. We break early. We set ourselves up for the perfect exit from the chicane. Now we're on the inside of Josh, on the inside of Yano. And we get 2 for one in that overtake. And now we're ahead of our championship rival. And now we have to make sure we nail this final two corners. We will not have the DRS from the cars ahead. So we have to nail these final two corners. Get phenomenal traction and that's what we've done we are ahead by eight tenths of Yano and this will give us enough room to not be swamped by cars on this straight you see Yano and Josh are still fighting down into turn one but that doesn't bother us we have the line we have the position and now next up on our radar is Otis Lawrence the race is starting to come towards a close 
only a handful of laps to go, but that is not going to deter us. That's not going to stop us. We're still going to fight to the last. We're going to fight for every position, every corner, every apex, every temp. We're going to try and maximise. We try to look down the inside of Otis, but a bit too far back. And you can see starting P10 being down in P13, coming out of the pit lane. And now we're in theoretically the fight for the race win if everything goes right for us we can be winning this race but it's going to be difficult all the drivers ahead of us are phenomenal they're amazing talents so they're not going to make it easy in the slightest and we're going to have to be very smart we've got limited battery from the amount of overtaking we've had to do a lot of cars ahead of us basically have a hundred percent battery that they've been saving it all in this stint so we have to be smart we have to be tactical and we have to get these done in the breaking zone speaking of the breaker zone otis go defensive but we go all the way down the inside laying on the brakes sliding into the apex and we have got the move done into p5 and now next up is marcel keeper we don't have much battery we don't have the opportunity of the straight lines that the other cars do right now so we're gonna have to be creative on the corner you can see my battery is draining quite a lot we're trying to cool down our engine on the straight you can see marcel gets held up by the cars ahead in the braking zone we're all over the back of him 1.7 temps to a theoretical p4 position in this race through the left hander through the right hander we get a good run out of there we look down the inside marcel goes a little bit defensive we send it down the inside room is given and on both sides of us we can see we raced side by side no contact there it was beautiful racing between the two of us there and now running up over the hill i knew my chance was fading my opportunity was going away so we had to get this move done quickly before my tires would start to fall off the cliff and now exit akaminarade deploying what we have left of the battery to try and get this move done down the inside we keep it controlled underneath the brakes so you see side by side and a little bit of attack to marcel so apologies for that one um but yeah we talked on Twitter after, it's all good, um, so yeah, it's all good. A little bit of a tap from my side, but nothing too bad, and like I said, apologies to Marcel for that little tap, but we had to go through it, we had to try, and uh, he lost a little bit of time, uh, but so did we, and uh, yeah, we've got no battery now, so we can't really attack him too much on the straight, and we're more vulnerable to Otis, but naturally we had to go for it, because if we got past, we would have had a chance of winning the race. But now, speaking of chaos, Nicholas Longay has gone off the track in turn one. I think he was side by side with Ulas, and there was a bit of rubbing and a bit of racing there. So I think there's a short inquiry for Ulas and Nicholas. So we have to see how that will unfold in these next few days. With that being said, though, we're here on lap 31. We've got very little battery. Nicholas hits Marcel going down the inside. And that gives us a small opportunity to get traction. But we just don't have the battery to run up the hill with. You can see just trying to pull that engine. Take as much clean air as possible through the left-hander. And now we're falling back into line. Final lap of the race. We've used up all of our batteries to make sure Otis can get back past us on the straight. Nicholas Longe is attacking Marcel Kiefer up ahead through the left through the right, down the fourth gear, our tyres are really starting to fade right now, and it's critical, and you can see everyone bunches up, and we have to slow on the brake, a bit of a corner, it causes us a little bit of rear locking, but we held it controlled, nice little bit of a drift on the final lap, if I have to say, but we have not got much opportunities now to get past Nicholas Longay, we have not got much opportunities now to get the podium paying position, but still, we're not going to give up, we're still going to fight, exit of Akaminarati, beautiful, and now on the battery, trying to attack Nicholas Longay, but we can't just get side by side enough to warrant a look up the inside. And to be fair, like you saw what happened earlier with Marcel, it's very difficult to get down the inside of there. You really need the other car to back out of it to get the move done. Uh, and I doubt Nicholas was going to back out of it considering the fighting Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship as well. But with that being said, what a comeback. I'm so happy with this race and how we was able to carve our way through the field and get back to a position that we could close in on the championship leaders. And going into the final three races of the season, we are in the championship fight. So, with that being said, next race is Spa. I'm actually going to be at Zandvoort for the GP. So, um... I don't know how much practice I'm going to be able to do for Spa, but nevertheless, we're going to send it and give us give us the best race that we can um and get also enjoy Zanfort from being there in person and try some stew pluffles uh but with that being said i've been brendan lee thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video guys with that some chat out bye bye